Hi, my name is Bogdan Marin. You might remember me from such a video as the job safety analysis and the Ohm's Law Ability video. Now I'm here to bring you a video on the direction of electron flow, polarities, and electrical quantities. So let's get started on the video here. First thing we're going to see is just a simple series circuit. I have a simple series circuit here and what I have drawn out is a source. I have a source and I have three lows, okay? So regular electron flow that we talk about now flows from negative to positive. Now, you're gonna see the negative being the black and the positive being the red. Current's flowing from negative through positive throughout all my loads. However, it changes through the source. Through the source, it goes positive to negative. As was brought up in a previous video on Kirchhoff's current law, the algebraic sum of all the voltage drops has to equal the sum of the voltage rises. That is why the current flows positive to negative in the source, but negative to positive throughout the loads. Now, there's people that say current flows from positive to negative, okay? It doesn't matter how current flows, it's still gonna hurt you, in the words of Kevin Walls. <laughs> now, uh, what we talk about when we say current's flowing from positive to negative, that is called conventional current flow. So if you ever see something called conventional current flow, the math is still the same. The only difference is they are talking about current flowing from positive to negative. But when we do our math here and for our course that we do here, we look at regular electron flow, which is negative through positive. Now, uh, when you're looking at electron flow, the only way electrons can flow is if there is a complete path and there has to be a difference in the charges, meaning that one point has to be more negative than the other point for electrons to travel, meaning that this point here is more negative than this point, so electrons travel around, okay? Now, current is the rate of flow per second. So if you were to look at a conductor at a certain spot, you could count all the coulombs going by. That is how you measure current. So current is measured in coulombs per second. So one amp, one amp equals a coulomb per second. Now, what is a coulomb? A coulomb is a method of comparing charge from one body to another. Meaning that if one has more charge than the other, that is how you compare one, or one to the other. Now, the symbol for charge is Q and our coulomb is C. As what we have here, an amp is a coulomb per second measuring charge. Now, what is voltage? So we know current is the amount of electrons flowing through a certain point. Now, voltage. Voltage is the pressure that pushes the electrons through the conductor. Some of you guys have worked with cable before as electricians, I hope. Not everyone's just been moving pipe or digging holes. If you look at your cables, all your cables have a voltage rating on them. That voltage rating is a manufacturer rating on the voltage, meaning that any more pressure of voltage, there's potential to bleed through the insulation and into your hand, causing you electrical shock. So that's why we say do not exceed the voltage rating on a cable, is because the pressure from the voltage will go through the insulation and shock you. So now that you know voltage is the pressure pushing the electrons, okay, uh, the, the energy used to move the coulombs is something called a joule. So the energy used to move the coulombs is a joule. So the one volt is going to equal a joule per coulomb. Okay? Joule per coulomb is a volt and an amp is a coulomb per second. Now, we've talked about the volt, the pressure, current being the flow. Now, what restricts the flow? The resistance. 
The resistance measured in ohms restricts the flow of the electrons. So if you have a bigger conductor, you have more resistance. If you have a smaller conductor, you have less resistance. No, that's not right, guys. That's the other way around. Small conductor, big resistance. Large conductor, smaller resistance. Pay attention. Okay? So, now that you know resistance, so we have our resistance, which is measured in, well, the, the symbol is R, which is measured in ohms. Now, we uh, also have our voltage here, which I put the V for volts. EMF. EMF is another way of saying a source. Electromotive force. EMF is a voltage as well. And you got our current I amperes for your A. Now, power. What is power? Well, from what you guys know in Ohm's law, power was this. I times E. Nothing changes here. That's, that's again, that's what power is. Power equals one amp times one volt. You guys saw my previous video by transposing the formula. I transposed Ohm's law and Watt's law and combined them and came up with a square formula. Now, when I combine these two formulas, I'm gonna get the, what um, a watt is. So a watt is a joule per second. How did I come up with this? Well, the way I came up with this is like so. Power equals a coulomb per second and a joule per coulomb. These cancel out, so I'm left with power equals a joule per second. Now, what is power? Well, power, it's the rate of doing work. The rate of doing work is a joule per second. Now, is, the, is power the same as energy? Power is not the same as energy, okay? Your energy consumption is based on what? I'll give you guys a chance to pause and figure this out. Pause. All right, so I'm sure some of you guys have heard of something called the hydro bill, okay? Or maybe your, uh, your landlord or someone else takes care of that and just charges you an astronomical amount of money. Who knows? But your hydro bill, <laughs> your hydro bill is going to be your rate of energy consumed per hour. So it's your power times your time. That is energy. Energy is a measurement of power times time. All your light bulbs, all your baseboard heaters, all your motors, everything you have, have a set wattage on them. So there are rules out there when you manufacture stuff, you must tell them the rate of consumption of power per hour. So I can't just come out with a light bulb and say it's one watt per, per half a minute. In small writing, and make a millions of dollars and get rich. Not allowed to do that. I wish I could, but I can't. Okay, so there are industry standards saying that everything must be rated per hour. So that is the energy consumption of a light bulb, energy consumption of a motor, and all those other things I just spoke about. All right, so that, uh, I guess to recap sort of what we covered here, we covered the flow of electrons through a circuit, the polarities, and going from negative to positive, negative to positive throughout a circuit, but positive to negative in a source. As well, we covered conventional current flow, which is the opposite of that. We covered an amp is a coulomb per second, a volt is a joule per coulomb, and then we uh, combined both formulas to make power equals a joule per second. Then we also made up our quantity symbol, electrical unit and abbreviation, logo, logo. And then after, we are done. So thank you for tuning into this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and keep tuning in for more. Thanks.